One of the reasons why we're making the video and the film is to give you an insight into what could be or may be happening to you in your future. Some people call it the journey, some people call it the pathway. And what we're going to be doing is visiting various different places and talking to various different people. And also give you an idea of what happens at radiotherapy time. So we'll be going to the radiotherapy centre as well. And also there'll be lots of other interviews throughout the journey. Um, the guys from Blackpool Sixth Form have been following me around for almost two weeks now. And we've recorded various different things for you to watch. Some will be good, some will be bad, some will be relevant to you, some won't be relevant to you. But hopefully, by the end of the film, you'll have a better insight into what's happening in your journey. Swallows is designed and there to support like-minded people that's got head and neck cancer. Thanks for watching the film today. That's it, I like it. Ah, ah, I okay. Do you want to do the interview like this? That's it. Tremendous. From the journey that I went on, I mean, I, I, I highly quantify the cost of what I went. It must be hundreds of thousands of pounds. But the treatment I got, it's those staff and those people, clever, clever, hard-working people. It, you get diagnosed, they say, this is what we're going to do to treat it. And you go, right, treat me, mm. get me better. And, and, and I'm alive, and I'm well, and I'm here. <sighs> Sounds an awful thing to say, but I'm almost glad that I've had it. Mm. Because it's, it's had such an impact on me in a positive way now. Mm. Uh, in, in the way I perceive things, the way I think about things, the way I live my life, the way I approach things, the way I treat people, the way I don't sweat the small stuff anymore, mm. or try not to, and uh, focus on what's important. And that lesson, fortunately, took cancer to, to teach those lessons to me, but I've got to say, I was saying this to someone the other day, this last year, this last 12 months, since I emerged from my treatment, and got got my strengths back. Probably, probably been the best twelve months of my life. The treatment that they uh, put in place for me was um, a course of radiotherapy. How many weeks was that? Uh, six six weeks. Six weeks. That's five times a week for six yeah. weeks. Uh, you get blasted um, for fifteen minutes. I've actually I just have to have this here. Can I? Oh, you got your mask? Showing it to someone the other day. This is the radio therapy now. Do you know what I've done with mine? <laughs> I've drew eyes on it and a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been learning nice about this. This is moulded to you. Uh, you strap you down, clip you down in place, and make sure you're on me while they fire all these x rays at you. Uh, the x rays are microwaves. Mm. Microwaves, isn't it? Mm. Uh, all aimed at the primary tumour coming in from all angles mm. and in doing so it causes all this tissue damage while hopefully killing off the primary set. I always said that it was like you were sunburned a hundred times worse <coughs> both inside and outside. But by June, by end sort of mid, May, June. Last year, 2012. A year ago, yeah. Um, I was starting to feel, yeah. feel on the mend. On the journey you've been in, what one bit of advice would you give to that person that's watching? The chances of survival, and not just surviving but thriving, uh, are much better now than they were even 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, and in another 10 years, can, you know, lots of cancer. I believe it's about 82% survived the stroke. Right. Yeah, so. well, yeah, that, that would be a massive increase in my use I'm sure. Um, is to not consider that it's a death sentence, and it's not anymore. Uh, in 10, 20, 30 years, they'll be treating it like they treat tuberculosis now. Yeah. Or even now, those, those treatments are pretty darn effective. They might be painful, they might, they might be distressing, um, and they might put you out of action for a while, but for the most part, they tackle it. So I take from that the advice really is to take on board what they're saying and do what they say. Don't think you're gonna. Don't think don't it's a death that. sentence. Let them do it, and you've got a right good chance of uh, getting through it. So don't don't worry yourself to death over it. Kev, on that note, it's been a pleasure. Always. Thanks a lot, my friend. My and pleasure. hopefully we'll speak again. All yeah. the best. Thanks a lot.
Hi Frank, thanks for agreeing to do the film today. No problem Chris. Just to explain to me a little bit about what Charity Champion does within Boots. It's just bringing the staff all together for the chosen charities that we cover and to have you know, the passion throughout the store so everybody gets on board and just to really make as much money as we can for the charity through having fun days with the staff and for customers. That's good. Does every Boots have a charity champion? The bigger stores, not the smaller stores, they're incorporating their sales or other areas, but yeah, they have a charity champion. The other thing that I know Boots do and do very, very well is look after cancer patients. Mm -hmm. There's two areas that are obviously specialised. That's obviously pharmacy and your number seven girls. Yes. Just to explain to the guys that are watching, because there will be some cancer patients watching mm -hmm. this now, what Boots can offer those guys. They offer that they have an active programme and with Macmillan and they offer really the pharmacists are all trained and a lot of the staff and they help the cancer patients when they come in and they've now got an active programme that they can take a DVD away and see what we can actually offer. Number seven is very much now trained in helping cancer patients with makeovers and getting their makeup right and their skin therapy and it's really coming on well and all the girls are trained. And what I was really surprised last time you was explaining to me, it's not just ladies for the number seven. No, definitely not, there's men. Because I use it. <laughs> <laughs> but the men's section. <laughs> but I was thinking more for the scar tissues and the scarring yeah, as well. They've got the, the, they've got the scar tissue and the, the moisturiser and also, you know, their up-to-date information. The girls can help you. Right. That's fantastic, Frank, and thanks for today. Thanks for coming today Mark, really appreciate that. Just if there was one tip you could give to anybody that's watching the film now, what tip would you give them? Um, well, if you get anything odd that it feels like ear, nose and throat, um, how minor it could be, get them, um, if it's here, get them to have a look at the back of your throat because um, obviously where it was missed for me, nobody looked at the back of my throat. Uh, and that's where your cancer sits, that's where the primary cancer is. And I know you're involved with the support group, but how did you originally get involved with the support group and why did you get involved? After my treatment and everything, um, I was offered my mask. Didn't want to know nothing about it, quite honestly. As far as I know, it was gone. But uh, we got a head and neck specialist nurse called uh, Jo Ashton, and she said, just come down if you don't like it you know, you, at least you've tried. And when I came down for the first evening, yeah, it was enjoyable. Everyone was jolly and, you know, it was all right. It was nothing about, you know, morbid, you know, like, and everyone feeling sorry for themselves. It was proactive, positive. So I stayed on board. Great stuff. Well, thanks for today, Mark. I really appreciate that. And uh, good luck for the future. Thanks. In head and neck cancer, 82% will survive. What you've got to do is make sure you're in that 82%. What you don't want to be is in the other club where you're not surviving. The issue we have in Lancashire and South Cumbria is, is that for head and neck cancer, of all cancers that's referred to, to the hospital, 80% of it is head and neck. And against the national stat of 6%, there's obviously a big issue in Lancashire and South Cumbria. They don't know what it is, and they don't know the reasons for it. They're looking into it, but they don't know. But Professor Richard Shaw from, from um, Liverpool University has openly said that within two years, Langston and South Cumbria will have an epidemic of head and neck cancer. Yes, the media does look at cancer as being the sombable part of it, but that's because fundraising is very important. And whether we like it or not, death is an emotional subject and it raises money. Living through it doesn't give you money. And as a charity, we survive on donations. Without those donations, without you guys doing what you do, we wouldn't survive as a support group. So it is important that we, we get over the 
but that helps doesn't help us with our fundraising. But hopefully what you're doing will do. But yeah, eighty two percent survived. So do you think most people see cancer as say when they get delivered it, they just think it as a death sentence, think no chance to survive. The big C is still got you're gonna die. When I got told Friday the thirteenth, two thousand eleven, I got told I got cancer and as far as I was concerned, I was gonna die. And it didn't matter what anyone said to me, I was gonna die. Because that's what happens when you get cancer. What I didn't realise was that's not the facts. Yeah. But you don't you don't listen to that, you know, and, and there'll be people out there now that are watching this film that won't believe that they're gonna survive. But I can assure you that 82% of people in this area survive. And that's because we've got a, a first class service. Blackpool Victoria Hospital, yeah, they take a lot of stick at the moment, but the ENT department who are gonna look after head and neck cancer, if you pay, you would not get better service. I had first class service from start to even now. The team at Blackpool Victoria Hospital and at Rosemere are second to none. And that's why we have an 82% survival rate, because of the team. Like in the northwest of this region, it's like kind of likely that you're gonna get this sort of cancer, but mm. there is quite a high chance that you're gonna survive, really. So yeah. don't really worry about it. this kind of cancer. You're lucky to get it, really, because you're yeah. gonna make it. In a if there's ever, if there's ever gonna a cancer you want to get, then get head and neck yeah, cancer because yeah. you have more chance of surviving. Yeah, you're gonna make it. Basically. So I'd rather have this than pancreatic cancer. I'd rather have this than bowel cancer because you have more chance of dying. With this one, there's every chance you can get in that 82% club. So, you know, listen to what they're saying to you. Do what they tell you to do. Be positive. Believe you can beat it. And believe you, mate, you'll beat it. Julian, thanks for agreeing to do the film today. Um, can you just tell me a little bit who you are and a little bit about BRU? Please. Okay, yeah, BIU has been around for about 15 years. Uh, we're a partnership based in St Anne's on Sea. Basically, what we do is we look after people's utilities. Mm. So, for the likes of Tesco's, for RBS, for the Church of the Latter day Saints, for the NHS, we take the bills, we audit the bills, we process the bills to let them know you should be paying these, you shouldn't be paying these. And for many clients, we also buy the energy. Right, okay. And just so people are aware of it, is it the commercial market or the public market? That's a good question. We do focus on the commercial, uh, commercial business side okay. because really, with the system we use called Empire, its main advantage is in multi-site. Right. So sort of single dwellings aren't really where we can add real value. Looking at a portfolio, for example, take RBS, which is over 2,000 properties, there the systems are really what gives us the advantage. Right. Because we just think it makes more sense. I mean, the other thing, of course, that's, that's very relevant, your big national charities, yes, of course, they are very, very important. They have an mm. important role to play. But they've also got the infrastructure set up to mm. collect money, yeah. to do national television yeah. uh, promotions and things like that. Whereas local charities, they rely more on people seeing their need and people engaging locally. And so. for that reason, that's why we're really proud to support the Swallows mm. and why we're not only supporting financially, but we want to support more practically as well. Mm. So, for example, we, we offer, I think they call them mad days, right. make a difference days. Mm. And our staff can come to the Swallows and help with their activities on a particular day. Right. And it's through, it's through combining activities. It's through supporting. We, we do a number of uh, fundraising events um, bespoke. And next year we'll be doing some of those with and for the Swallows because it is about getting that engagement. It's about understanding Swallows exist for a reason. It's a very important reason. It's a critically important message. We need to support you guys in making that message count. Right. That's lovely. And I thank you for obviously contributing to the Swallows. I thank you for your support. And thanks for being on the film today. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Thanks for agreeing to do the film for us today. As you know, the film crew are following the swallows around and making a little bit of a documentary about sure. it. But part of the journey is the radiotherapy area. Um, we all go through, most of us go through radiotherapy, myself, also a former patient of the Rosemary Centre. 
the guys do a fantastic job here, very, very positive and look after us fantastically. And all I'd like to do is show some of the people what, we, what we're going to do today. Can you just introduce yourself and a little bit about what you do? Yeah, um, my name's Dr. Karat Mahmood. I'm a newly appointed consultant in head and neck cancer here, based here at the Rosemary Centre in Preston. Um, I actually see patients from uh, across the network, um, so I do a clinic in Blackpool, Preston, as well as, as Blackburn, and we catch patients from all over the region, mm. really, um, having discussed them through a multidisciplinary meeting that we have right. every week. Um, I'm usually involved in helping come up with treatment decisions um, at the start of the patient pathway when they've had tests and they've got a new diagnosis. Um, and then um, my role is really to talk through patients and counsel them about the treatments that they're having. And I predominantly am um, administering chemotherapy or a combination of chemo and radiotherapy. Um, and it's a matter of making sure they have the information, they can send for the treatment, and then they're supported through the course of the treatment and then the follow-up afterwards. So, right. um, so there's there's a role from start to finish, really. Right. Okay. 